Wait, did you miss that? Let's watch that at a different angle. What you're watching is called thread rolling, and it's one of the fastest, most efficient ways to create the strongest possible thread. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything there is to know about it. So how does this thing work? Well, it forms the thread instead of cutting the thread, and you go slower than your pitch, so as you do that, it pulls the roller out, which then will let it snap open. Once it snaps open, you pull your part out, and then all you have to worry about at that point is closing the unit again. And I'm gonna show you a few different ways to do that in today's video. Keep on rolling, baby. All right, before we get rolling away like Limp Biscuit in the 90s, let's go over some of the basics of your thread before we try to roll them here. Now, as you can see here, I drew a picture of a thread in 2D for you guys. Now, normally, if you're cutting your thread, you'll machine to your major diameter and work your way down to your minor diameter with either a single point tool or a thread mill. But when you're rolling, we're actually gonna machine to our pitch diameter minus a thousandths or two, and we're gonna form the peaks and valleys of our thread in. There's no chips being created here. This is compressing the material to form the thread. Now I did a quarter 28 thread in this video, and our pitch diameter was this range right here. I found that running it at 224 made the perfect thread. Because I like you guys so much, we're gonna disassemble, reassemble, and dial this holder back in, so let's take it apart. One important thing to note before I take these rollers out, you'll notice that they're numbered numerically and they're also labeled alphabetically. You want the numbers on one side and the letters on another. In this case, we have one, two, three. If you're doing a right-handed thread, you want these to be clockwise. All right, so if you get a close-up on this, you can actually see how this works. Do you see how these pins right here are eccentric to the main diameter that's holding the rollers? This is what's allowing them to expand and contract when this thing's working. So if I spin it, you can see these rollers spinning. This is what pulls them away from the part when you're done rolling your thread. And the reason why that works the way it does is because there's a planetary gear in there. Each one of these pins has a gear underneath of it. And then in the middle, there's a gear touching all three gears. When that rotates, it rotates all three pins, which pulls the rollers away. So the last thing I want to talk about before we reassemble this is the locking mechanism. This thing here uses coolant to relock the thread roller. When you used to thread back in the day, like on a screw machine, you'd roll your threads and this holder would pop out like that, right? So then as it would index around to other stations, you'd have some sort of rod sticking out and as it hit that, it would relock your holder. That's the old way of doing it. Today, we have things like this mechanism here that uses high pressure coolant to drive this pin right here to relock the holder for me. This is super convenient and it's actually faster because on a CNC machine, you pretty much always have to wrap it around to some point and hit that rod to make it so it relocks your holder. Whereas now I can just use coolant, it just fires it while I'm doing something else. It's way faster, way more convenient. I love that thing. One more thing before we dial this in. Let's back off our rollers before we put this in the machine. If your rollers are too small, the thread will overfill the rollers and that could potentially crack them or strip them out. You don't want that. And you can see right here, there's actually a sliding scale that shows you where you're at. I'm gonna back it up all the way to the plus sign so we know our rollers are as far back as possible. That way we're being as safe as possible about this. Each one of these lines represents four thousandths. So you can probably imagine if you had this all the way at the negative, you're gonna be like 20 or 30 thousandths minimum shorter and it's gonna overload your rollers instantly. So let's back it off to be safe here. So let's break these three screws loose that hold our setting and will let us adjust this roller. As I loosen this, it makes the setting of the roller bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm gonna go all the way to the max before we throw this in the machine. And then now that that's backed out, let's tighten these back down. So now that our rollers are set in place, let's throw this back in the machine and dial it in. Let's get rolling, baby, yeah! All right, so I think I've rolled the world's most insignificant thread here. We barely even touched it. Let's see where we're at. So now I'm at 225. And that's And as you can see here, we're shooting for 249 to 242.5 on our major diameter. So that means I want to adjust my rolling head about 17 thousandths here to hit the low limit. Remember, you don't want to overload your rollers. That can crack them or strip them out. So we're going to shoot for the low. Each line on our roller is about four thousandths when I adjust it. So if I go four lines, that'll be 16 thousandths. I'm gonna go just a little bit over four lines to try to hit 17, and then we're gonna see what happens. Let's see if that works. All right, let's check out our adjustment. What did it do? What did it do? 
and we're super low, we're at 233. But again, guys, that's fine. I'd rather be low than high when thread rolling. So let's make another adjustment. And let's see if we can get it closer. All right, looks like third time's the charm here. Measure our major diameter. We're at 246, 246.5. That's good, that's actually almost perfect. Let's check our gauge. We got our no-go, which is being a no-go. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. We got our go. Ooh, look at that. Smooth like butter. All right, I got one more thing though I wanna show you in the quality office. What the? No, 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 that's not right. All right, now we're in the quality office. So I laid out the parts here for you guys. You can check them out. This right here is a turned part without any thread rolling. And if I move it over, you can see this right here is our second part, which I'm pretty sure I set the world record for rolling the least amount of material because it only rolled 1,000th of material. I don't think there's any way you could roll less, but that's our first part. Right here is after we made our adjustment. And you can see the thread is starting to form now. You can see that I'm starting to roll my minor and my major up, but the thread isn't complete yet. After our third adjustment, we got a full thread. And here's where you can really see the major, the minor, and the middle of the thread. You can see the diameter I turned to, and you can see how that runs through the middle of the thread. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm thread forming. I'm creating the major and the minor from a diameter around the pitch. All right, let's go back to the machine. All right, so the last bit of technical information I have for you guys on thread rolling is the programming. It's actually a lot easier than you're probably thinking. Now, normally when you're tapping, you have to go at the exact pitch of your thread. And in this case, I'm doing a quarter 28 thread. So if I was tapping, I'd have to go 35 thousandths and seven tenths per rev, but I'm thread rolling. And what I need to have happen is I need the head of the roller to pull out as I'm threading onto it, so it snaps open. So I'll go about five to 10% lower than my normal thread pitch. And you can see here, I'm going 32 thousandths per revolution. That will slowly pull the head out and make it snap open. And that's it. That's all you gotta know about programming. It's a lot easier than you think. I've got a few different materials here that I've never rolled before, so let's throw them in the machine right now and see how good they do. Or don't do, I guess. We're all gonna find out, right? It's for science. All right, first up is brass. Now we all know this is gonna work, but the real question here is, is it gonna look good? Cycle start. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, honestly, not too surprising. The brass worked perfectly. I was expecting it to potentially flake a little bit and tear and not look good, but dude, for sure, you can roll brass. That's awesome. On to the next material. Next up is aluminum or aluminium if you're across the Atlantic. My prediction here is it will roll perfectly as long as the material doesn't stick to the rollers. If it sticks to the rollers, it's game over. It's not even gonna look like a threat. It's gonna look like crap. Let's see what happens. Let's see how the aluminum did. All right, so the thread actually looks good, but the major diameter looks kind of torn. But I want to give aluminum a fair chance here, so let's run it with coolant and see if that improves anything. I'm just gonna say it right now, my prediction is, is the coolant probably isn't gonna make that much of a difference. Did the oil help our cause here? No, not really. It's still torn on the major diameter. Some aluminums roll better than others. This is 2024, so it might not roll as well as something like 6061, which is harder. Now let's go on to some super duplex and hope we don't break this thing. <laughs> so I can't think of any more excuses to delay doing this. Um, you don't have to go to the bathroom, do you? No? All right, so. Yeah, crap, all right, let's do this. I'm out of excuses. <laughs> It's actually my first time cutting Super Duplex. I've never cut it before. Let's see how this works. Oh! How bad is it? All right, we got, we got some burrs from our sub face off, but whatever. 
it rolled the thread. So the super duplex actually rolled, which is pretty cool. I ran this at the same speeds and feeds I'd run 17.4 at. It's a little bit buried in the top of the threads, but I just wanted to see if this would work. This is why I like thread rolling, because you can really hop from material to material and get a consistent thread. Typically anything under 47 Rockwell can be rolled as long as it has a minimum elongation of 5%. Thread rolling really is the most consistent method to make a thread if you're running production. If I wanted to run this lights out, it would run a way more consistent thread because all I have to do is worry about my turn diameter. The rollers will last a really long time depending on the material you're cutting. I would much rather have to dial in a turning tool and make that hold a consistent size than try to single point this and have that run all night. I feel like that tool would fail a lot quicker and you could thread mill it, but I do feel like for production rolling it, it's just gonna be so much faster. We've pretty much gone over everything today. We've rolled our threads on different materials. We've gone over the programming, we've gone over the setup, and we had a bunch of fun. Thank you guys for all your support, all you who are viewing this right now. Thank you, you make this all possible. And uh, yeah, have a good day. Bye. I'm gonna show you everything from how it works. We're always getting at it, man. You got the boss man over there filming us, we're filming him. What's up, Titan?